very good evening and thank you for joining us. You are watching a special presentation and today we're going to be discussing something that's very relevant to, I believe, every citizen in Sri Lanka and the, that is the geopolitical aspect and the diplomacy aspect that Sri Lanka has when it comes to dealing with international uh, forces and also other nations that might be essential in the development of Sri Lanka and Sri Lanka's future. Now, I know there's been a lot of talk that has been going around regarding delegations visiting us, especially Japan and France and recently India as well. So to get more insight on exactly how uh, this is going down and how it is happening right now, we have with us a very key figure and that is the Honorable State Minister and that is Mrs. Tharaka Balasuri. Thank you very much, sir, for taking the time to speak to us regarding the foreign affairs aspect of our nation. Of course, you are I believe the best person for us to speak on regarding this matter. Now, so let's get right get get right into the discussion. Now, there is a lot of talk regarding the Japan and of course the France aspects of the diplomacy that we have been seeing going around in social circles. There's been a work lunch and a lot of people believe that there's not much being spoken about because it's very short, very curt um, areas of discussion of basically a few hours at most. Now, sir, could you please explain to us how these relations, especially France and uh, uh, Japan in particular, how it is playing into Sri Lanka's current economic uh, situation and what changes have been made with these diplomatic visits, sir? Well, both uh, Japan and uh, France are both uh, a key part of Sri, a key Sri Lankan development partners, uh, and it's we've been having discussions with uh, our key development partners uh, continuously, periodically, uh, and uh, we feel that uh, both these visits uh, are marked a very important part, important step in Sri Lanka's. Uh, 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 dipl diplomatic relations with uh, Japan and uh, France. Uh, with France, we are celebrating the 75th uh, anniversary of di diplomatic ties, and this is the first time uh, that uh, a French president has visited uh, all by for a very short period of time uh, uh, to uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, and uh, I think the president had dis discussions with uh, discussions with uh, the uh, the French president uh, for or a period of two uh, two hours. And then also uh, with the uh, the uh, Japan, uh, with the Japanese minister, we had bilateral meetings uh, at the foreign ministry. And then the uh, Japanese uh, foreign minister was also also met the uh, the prime minister and the um, uh, the president in his visit. So uh, and also my foreign minister has been meeting uh, his counterparts in other countries, also in the uh, multilateral floor fora. So let's say. If, if you go for uh, a, a multilateral, multilateral function, then all the foreign ministers usually come for these uh, functions and then you can have uh, bilateral meetings. Um, and uh, so I think these, both these uh, visits are, are marked a very important turn. Uh, and also the, uh, the, the, uh, the period of time, I think that we need to comment on that also. Uh, because usually the uh, most, uh, let's say, uh, bilateral meetings between two countries, I would say probably is limited to a period of about an hour or hour and a half. Okay, so uh, before the uh, meetings take place, there's a lot of work which the uh, the officials of the foreign ministry uh, 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 get involved and uh, they negotiate with their uh, counterparts. Uh, so I think um, so what you see is just the the icing on the top, but actually the cake is you know baked elsewhere. So and it needs to uh, the groundwork has to be done uh, beforehand. Uh, so in this regard, I think both these uh, meetings were uh, very important meetings, uh, uh, looking at Sri Lanka's uh, Sri Lanka's uh, future economic uh, prospects. I see, and uh, especially what you mentioned, so there's a lot of back-end work that goes on before the actual meetings take place, and I believe there's a very strict agenda, uh, and it's not just a couple of hours, it is a very structured a few hours as well, and there's a lot of productivity going on uh, in that aspect. Absolutely, I mean, it, it is, uh, it's very structured, the meetings are very structured, the agenda and everything is uh, agreed upon before uh, the meetings. But also it's uh, periodic meetings uh, between our friendly countries are absolutely important. I think uh, especially considering uh, the, um, how the, uh, the light train uh, project was cancelled during the last uh, government, it 
left a small scar. It's, you know, the relationships between countries are also, I suppose it's very similar to personal relationships where you have bumps and then, you know, sometimes uh, that uh, uh, there can be uh, there can be feelings of a um, uh, uh, little bit of hurt feelings uh, pertaining to certain events and I think certainly Japan uh, was a little bit hurt in the manner in which uh, the the light train project was cancelled. It was cancelled unilaterally. So if you come to, if you have an agreement with another country, if you want to cancel that TV, uh, event, uh, the agreement, you need to uh, usually, it's better that you negotiate with that country. Uh, so I think they were. So in that aspect, I would think that uh, the uh, it also uh, the visits of foreign ministers also sim send send a, a, a symbolic message also that let's say for example, a country like Japan, uh, there's so many countries who would request their foreign minister to visit uh, foreign minister to visit uh, uh, that those countries but obviously given the time constraints uh, that the, uh, the they can only visit certain number of countries so uh, the fact that uh, in his tour that the, the sri lanka was also uh, I, I included. Think, uh, included now i think the uh, the foreign minister was visiting the japanese foreign minister was visiting i, think, I believe five countries uh, in six days okay so uh, it of course, these meetings tend to be very hectic and uh, from the foreign minister's perspective quite tiring also, uh, but it's very structured and uh, uh, so I think we had a very good uh, bilateral meeting, uh, uh, bilateral meeting covering different aspects. So for this bilateral meeting, it's not just the foreign minister and the foreign secretary or the, or the state minister who participates. We, have, we get, you know, the respective officials from different uh, the line ministries. Let's say if it's uh, to do with employment, we get the, uh, let's say maybe the uh, secretary to the Ministry of Labor or assistant uh, secretary to the Ministry of Labor. So, so we, we have different uh, people participating in these meetings. And then, of course, there's a follow-up work that uh, where the foreign ministry, uh, together with the, the line ministries, uh, um, look at uh, the, uh, what was discussed, what was agreed, and to see uh, how it will be followed up. I see. So it's not just two delegations meeting. Before and also after such a meetup, there's yeah. going to be a lot of coordination, a lot of follow-up that's going to go through, uh, albeit not just from the foreign ministry, but also the relevant ministries as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, what you mentioned, sir, regarding uh, the fact that it's a little bit like a relationship. Now, maintaining foreign relations is very much not an immediate uh, here are the results kind of uh, type of work, of course. Yeah. It goes on over the course of multiple years, decades even sometimes. Yeah. So could you please elaborate sir, on, on that? specific aspect where now where do we stand exactly when it comes to our current foreign relations and our current foreign policy how does it look like for us at the moment with our most uh, neighboring countries like India how does it uh, look like for us sir we have very good relationships and you know we have a uh, with with all countries uh, I think particularly within India our relationship has, be, has been at an all-time high I would say um, uh, so, um, uh, the, the India's uh, visit uh, to, to by the president also that um, uh, it was very uh, landmark visit. Uh, uh, there we spoke about connectivity with India. Um, so, uh, I would think that uh, the, I would think that India's visit was very important in in terms of connectivity. We, particularly, they spoke of five areas of connectivity. Uh, let's take for example uh, the air connectivity. Now, uh, at the moment, uh, the, you, you get um, planes coming from India to uh, Chennai to I think to uh, uh, to Palali, uh, but the passengers can carry only uh, seven kgs because you can't have large planes landing in, over there. So the Indians agreed to increase the uh, the uh, to the tarmac of the uh, the airport, uh, and then thereby larger planes can come. Uh, then we spoke of uh, the, the the sea connectivity, in, including uh, to uh, and then it was uh, to have a, a ferry service between Sri Lanka and uh, India. Uh, I think uh, the it's it'll be starting from Na, Na, Nagapati or uh, to uh, uh, to uh, to Sri Lanka. Uh, I think that's absolutely important, just uh, in terms of connectivity. Now, just imagine that's 300 million people. Uh, um, in South, uh, 300 million uh, middle class people, uh, middle class in India. Now imagine the, having the opportunity that, let's say, uh, uh, the any anyone 
who wants to come for a, a weekend or a long weekend can uh, hop into their car and then drive to South India and then they can uh, take the ferry, come to Sri Lanka and then visit, visit around Sri Lanka for a couple of days and then they can go back to, they can go back to uh, India. Now we see that kind of with uh, local tourism, uh, when there's a long weekend you, ha you see these loads of uh, motorbikes with kids uh, going to, uh, to some scenic uh, place. So similarly, that can be extended to the Indians. So I think the uh, the, 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 the ferry connectivity, and in, the, in this regard, that the president's discussions pertaining to a land bridge uh, uh, becomes important. Of course, a land bridge will take a you know long time to uh, make, a uh, long time to come. You have to have the feasibility records, uh, reports, and all those things. But I think the connectivity is absolutely important. I think or, or, or think that you know the ferries has to be big. Uh, you can carry like you know two, two or three hundred vehicles. But initially, I think we will start with some small ferries and this connectivity will be made. Uh, then, of course, we, uh, I think the, the discussions uh, also uh, curtailed around uh, the uh, connectivity in the uh, power and energy uh, uh, sector. Um, now, for example, uh, when uh, the Foreign Minister Jai Shankar was here, he gave the example of where uh, in about 10 or 15 years back, the uh, Nepal also had a, a financial crisis and then there was a power crisis and as a result, the Indians had to build, uh, build a grid to Nepal uh, and they supplied power to Nepal. But then the Nepalists realized that, you know, they have a lot of mountains and then uh, they can produce hydropower and they in turn can sell it to India. So now, uh, what Nepal and both Bhutan are exporting power to India. So we know that uh, apart from, uh, let's say, Gujarat and uh, a few other, uh, one or two other states, the, the engine of growth in uh, India is in the southern states. All these, the big, uh, the IT companies, the car manufacturers, everything is in the southern states. So we can do the same thing. You know, we can build, uh, we can build, um, uh, uh, not hydro, but we can build wind power and uh, the, the discussions were held up, uh, had taken place on offshore wind power and also uh, solar power. Uh, and then if we have grid connectivity, then we can sell that uh, the excess amount of uh, excess amount of electricity to India. So the, it does two things. Okay, One is it gives some, uh, if we expand, if we produce more power than what the country needs, one is it brings a, a revenue stream. Okay, and it also uh, it also gives uh, energy security to uh, uh, Sri Lanka, and I also think that when you go to the renewables, okay, if we keep if we move it towards the renewables, the cost of uh, the cost of uh, electricity production per unit uh, decreases. So uh, as a result of that, there will be other impacts such as you know, the industries. It, it becomes more competitive for uh, for the industries. So um, I think the energy, uh, the connectivity in the energy, uh, uh, the sphere is also it's very important. But that's not the only thing uh, which they spoke of. They spoke of a, a gas pipeline from India to uh, uh, Sri Lanka. That they spoke of you know developing the Trincomalee uh, area as a industrial zone and uh, the uh, developing the the tank farms. So uh, I think the discussions were very uh, meaningful in that regard. Of course, there's been a lot, as you just mentioned, so in this short amount of time, uh, India has, you know, while it doesn't look like it on the surface to people that are not uh, really researching into it almost, uh, there has been a lot of continuing discussions and that is what is allowing uh, our country to, you know, progress with this relationship with India in order to uh, even embark on such uh, opportunities, of course. Now, so before we go into a break, very quickly, I'd like to ask you uh, regarding the mending ties aspect of foreign relations now so earlier you mentioned uh, japan uh, and the unilateral cancellation of the light trains could you please uh, a little bit of an explanation on that aspect on how foreign ministry is responsible for the easing of such tensions i, I think such tensions will tend to take place uh, uh, on and off. It's like, as I mentioned, it's for foreign relationship is also like any other relationship, you know, where 
you have your ups and downs. Uh, but what one thing which we need to appreciate is um, that since the 1950s, uh, I think all governments have been uh, have been carrying forward the policy of uh, non-alignment and neutrality. Uh, and uh, although there are ups and downs because of the work which was done by all governments and the work was, which was done by the foreign ministry during all these governments. Uh, our long-term relationship with uh, in uh, long-term relationship with uh, all these countries are, are very favorable. Yes, you can have because of one issue, people can get hurt a little bit, but that's not going to uh, determine the uh, your future. That's just a small hiccup, okay? And, and that's going to go away. Uh, and uh, so the more important thing is the long-term relationship. Uh, just like if you have if you are, if you are, if you are in a relationship, you can have some hiccups uh, along the way. Along the way. Uh, and and uh, I think uh, so. Um, we, and also, Sri Lanka is uh, some with some of the discussions with, with uh, I think France and uh, also with Japan that you know Sri Lanka is taking a very important position as the chair of the uh, IORA uh, yeah, this year at the end of this year and how we are going to position that is also it's very important. And I think the Indo-Pacific is becoming a very uh, area of interest for uh, everybody and. Um, have, uh, and discussions also prevail on uh, our future action, course of action uh, pertaining to the Indo-Pacific. All right. I think that is a very great point for us to leave this segment off on. Um, there's a lot for us to discuss in relation to specifically the future of the foreign relations in relation to Sri Lanka and other nations and also what kind of economic support is given to the middle class of the country via foreign investments. Uh, but before we discuss any of that, let's go in for a very short commercial break. You're watching a special presentation. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You are watching a special presentation on Other Than 24 and we were in discussion with Honorable State Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Hans Bala Surya. Now, sir, before we went off into the break, we were speaking about different relations now with Japan, France and also mainly India and how the foreign ministry and foreign relations have helped over the years procure certain projects and advancements for the country, be it economically or politically, social, socially. There's a lot of benefits that come with maintaining relations over a period of time. Now, in, re in regards to the results aspect of maintaining foreign relations, sir, could you please enlighten us uh, and our viewers relating to the foreign investments aspect of this relations talk? Now, has the foreign ministry done any specific efforts uh, in procuring foreign investments for Sri Lankan businessmen or businesswomen? Uh, is there some sort of uh, talk going on relating that with any delegation? Yeah, um, we, uh, once again, you know, we are, we are uh, um, a facilitating ministry and then if you look at our foreign, um, our ambassadors uh, work tirelessly in trying to bring uh, the investments to uh, Sri Lanka. And then also we uh, take certain delegations uh, overseas uh, and then try to, uh, try to make links uh, with um, the business entities. Now, uh, for example, I was we had a, uh, a political consultation in Saudi, uh, and I led the group. Uh, and then, uh, while the political consultation was going, we also had uh, a delegation of this construction association, young contractors association uh, delegates uh, coming to Saudi. And then we were able to uh, put uh, them together with their counterparts. Uh, of course, as you know, the, the construction uh, field in Sri Lanka is, um, is undergoing challenging times. Uh, so if we can, let's say, for example, get them some contracts in, uh, in, uh, in Saudi Arabia, then they'll be able to uh, survive these tough times. So similarly, we have helped uh, our, uh, the investors uh, uh, when they look at other, other emerging markets like Africa. Uh, a lot of uh, many business delegates have gone to Africa and then uh, through our embassies they have made uh, connections. Uh, and also, of course, then we, uh, we also want to um, uh, get investors to come over here and then look at uh, the, uh, the potential in Sri Lanka. But we also must 
uh, keep in mind uh, that uh, in order for us to uh, bring investors, uh, uh, we, need, we need a product in order for us to sell. Uh, now, if you look at things such as the, uh, the ease of doing business, if you look at uh, the corruption index um, and uh, many other indexes, Sri Lanka's position tends to fluctuate within a certain uh, bandwidth, uh, but doesn't progress beyond that. Okay? Every government comes and says, during us, uh, we increased uh, 10 places, we increased uh, you know, uh, 5 places or something like that. But what we really need to look at it is, if you're in, in the, let's say, 110 or 105 position, how do we move to like, you know, 60s, uh, the, uh, maybe at least like uh, 50 places or something. So, uh, if you look at before all this, before the, uh, the Aragale and all that from 77 to uh, the Aragale period, Sri Lanka has not uh, enticed a lot of foreign investments. Okay? So, there's something wrong in how we do business in Sri Lanka. So, we need to fix that in order to, uh, in order to uh, get more investments into Sri Lanka. And another aspect of that is that uh, we need to get into uh, we need to get into um, uh, uh, the uh, FTAs with other countries, uh, so that we can we can uh, we'll be part of the supply the world supply chain. In that regard, I think the uh, although very ambitious, the president's uh, the initiative to get into RCEP uh, uh, RCEP uh, organization is vital. Uh, so, um, and also I think that, you know, people are, it's much more easier to sell uh, 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 the, when, when, when it's a multilateral uh, economic agreement uh, rather than a bilateral economic agreement. As soon as we signed the agreement with, uh, uh, with uh, FTA, with Singapore, people, there were a lot of professionals saying this is very harmful for Sri Lanka. When we try to sign the uh, agreement with India, saying that it's very harmful for uh, India. But if it's a multi, it's a lot of countries who have got into a trade agreement, then you can't say it's, you know, it's beneficial for the other, what, 10 or 15 countries, and it's only harmful for Sri Lanka. So it's, it's more, yeah, from a political angle, it's more... It's a give and take. Yeah, it's more easy to sell uh, to the people. Uh, but it's absolutely important that we get into we get into these the supply chains. But getting into the supply chains alone is not enough. Now, Sri Lanka has signed the FTA with uh, Pakistan, uh, which is about 18 years old. Uh, but our trade has not increased significantly. It has increased from about I think from about 150 million at that time when we signed it to about 500 million now. So either way, you know, if you have, if you take for a 7, 18, uh, 18 uh, year period, the, the natural growth, then you, know, you would have been around the 500 uh, million mark now. And also, even now, uh, the biggest export to Pakistan is beetle leaves, okay, so then we know that uh, the, uh, the, uh, the FTA has not met its, uh, has not um, uh, or, or, or has not materialized, or the expectations of what we expected has not materialized. So I think we need to review the certain uh, the trade agreements which we have, and we also need to get into uh, lots of new uh, uh, the trade agreements uh, in order to uh, to to get the supply chains of the world. And before anything, we need to also get uh, get our act together, saying that you know in, we need to reduce the uh, corruption, uh, the uh, indexes of doing uh, business, um, rule of law index, and things such as that, uh, in order for uh, us to make progress. Of course. Now, specifically on the corruption aspect as well, now we've seen the anti-corruption bill being passed. We've seen a lot of legislation being passed recently. Yeah. Now, with such, uh, you know, attempt of cleaning up basically the inside relations of Sri Lanka, how does that uh, affect the external relations? Does that reflect with other delegations, uh, sir, when it comes to... Uh, our uh, legal amendments and our revisions? Yeah, of course. I think, you know, we, uh, we see that uh, the countries which are very, uh, countries whether it's, you know, democratic or not or whatever, which has a very strong institutional framework, have we see them progressing. And the rule of law has to be a very important aspect of that uh, when it comes to uh, investments. Uh, so I, I think we need to strengthen our uh, the uh, institutions uh, in order to uh, us to progress, um, and I think these things definitely matter. Yeah. 
Now, uh, now that we are moving on from that uh, area of the discussion, sir, now there is a lot of talk regarding the free and open Indo-Pacific. Mm. Um, this is being touted by mainly France, Japan and other nations and we've seen it pop up even more so recently following the delegations that visited. If you could um, tell us a little bit about this uh, entire plan, sir, how, does, how could this potentially affect the common man and the man on the ground? Well, most of these agreements, whether it's if you look at, you know, are, tends to be uh, agreements on connectivity, if it's, if it's the BRI or the, uh, the, uh, the free, and, uh, 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 free and open Indo-Pacific. And if you look at some of these strategies of uh, the uh, recent strategies of uh, uh, some of these countries, it tends to be uh, about connectivity. So anything to do with connectivity, we are all right. Okay, we, we feel that you know the, we need to get be more connected to uh, these uh, countries, uh, but what we are uh, when we follow a neutral or let's say uh, when we follow a neutral or a, a underlying policy, our main concern is that we will not allow we will, we will not align ourselves militarily with uh, any party. Okay, now that doesn't mean that we are going. We have a, uh, a foreign policy which we where we do nothing. We of course will uh, have to have our uh, have alliances or, or, or arrangements with uh, countries depending on the uh, depending on the uh, the need uh, at that time. Uh, of course, this will take place in in terms of trilateral, bilateral, and also multilateral, multilateral arrangements. Um, so the Indo-Pacific, uh, how we view it uh, is, as you know, you look at the uh, the the Pacific Ocean as a separate entity and the Indian Ocean as a uh, separate entity. Uh, of course, as far back as in 1971, Sri Lanka uh, sponsored a UN resolution making India, uh, making uh, Indian Ocean an uh, ocean of peace. So our stand, uh, as I think, as far back in, as in the 1970s till now, is that you know we we believe that Indian Ocean should be an ocean of peace. Uh, we discourage militarization of the Indian Ocean. And we also uh, feel that you know it has to be rules based, and there has, there has to be free navigation uh, for all uh, in the uh, Indian Ocean. So that's those are the guiding principles which we would like to take uh, take uh, forward. And specifically drawing attention to that aspect, there is no need for any unnecessary hysterics in relation to uh, militarizing or any sort of uh, capabilities in that aspect when we have, uh, of course, had this discussion with you. We've spoken a lot about how this is going to affect the common man and how trade relations and economical relations and, of course, foreign investments uh, can really play a big factor if the foreign relations aspect is done uh, right over a, a very large period of time. So, of course, it's not just uh, instantaneous gratification there is a little bit of work that goes on over the years. Now, sir, before we uh, end this discussion, I'd like to ask you just one question relating the future of Sri Lanka's foreign relations. Are there any specific plans uh, in relation to keeping diplomatic ties with other nations or is it uh, just that we go on uh, as we have been? No, I mean, we have to see how where the world is uh, moving to and we need to uh, uh, kind of create our own niche uh, 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 and make our own uh, noise uh, in that. I think I think the, uh, the president's uh, the, uh, initiative of uh, climate, cli having a climate justice forum is uh, absolutely important. Uh, now, those are also interlinked with certain uh, other things. Let's take for example, uh, the, the, uh, the, if you look at emissions, uh, uh, these 95 percent of the emissions are from the developed countries and only 5 percent come from the, uh, the, uh, the developing countries. And then uh, about um, the, 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 there was international agreement saying that you know, there'll be, the developed countries will be providing 100 billion dollars uh, every year for uh, uh, climate uh, initiatives. So now we have to pay a price which is, uh, seems unfair. Okay. But I think these all these um, these initiatives also can be uh, the can be um, we can uh, we, we, what we see is regionally there are other similar initiatives now uh, recently uh, all the uh, the um, countries uh, the heads of the uh, covering the Amazon uh, the the uh, that area the, all the they met in uh, in yeah, issues. Uh, 
So obviously climate justice uh, forum and uh, although they are in Latin America, we can work together. Egypt, for example, is uh, starting, uh, uh, start, has started an initiative uh, pertaining to uh, debt relief and uh, debt forgiveness kind of uh, uh, on that line. So uh, the, although the, uh, uh, the, let's say the climate um, uh, the justice forum also can have can be linked with that. So I think you know uh, although there are different different initiatives, the climate justice forum, we can make our own niche, but we need to align with also other uh, regional organisations uh, and see uh, and hopefully uh, we can convince the developed world that uh, developed world that uh, that uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to. Uh, global warming that uh, they have to pay their fair price for the, uh, the things which they have done. Of course, uh, preventing disproportionate uh, taxation and of course uh, unnecessary or unfair agreements is one of the biggest uh, roles that a foreign ministry has uh, the responsibility to do and I believe that through this discussion I feel like our viewers would have understood that there is active measures in place that's being done in relation to keeping our uh, sovereignty while also integrating with other nations uh, worldwide. Uh, unfortunately, sir, we have come up to time uh, for this discussion. Uh, I'm pretty sure everyone watching at home would have had a very insightful discussion and would have taken away quite a few points in relation to Sri Lanka's foreign policies and where we stand uh, in the world. Well, that's all we have for you tonight on this special presentation on Other Than 24. If you had missed any of today's programs, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Other Than English. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.